<clears throat> the following interview was conducted with Jill L. Steiner, student representative to the Board of Trustees, class of 2009 nine for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, May the 7th, 2009 in West Lafayette Stewart Center. Good morning, Jill, and thank you very much, and welcome to the Oral History Program. I'd like to ask you a little bit uh, where you were born and your parents and siblings and early years. Okay, sure. Um, I was born in Decatur, Indiana, and I was born on October 11, 1985. My parents are Kent and Shirley Steiner, and they both have resided in Adams County, Indiana, um, since they were born as well. And is there anything else? Where did where'd you go? To, where did you go to grade school? And tell us a little bit about high school, some of your activities and things. Okay. Um, I went to Adams Central Community Schools, and it was one building all the way throughout kindergarten through um, when I graduated as a senior. It was one building. Um, wow. I graduated with 79 students, so it was a really good atmosphere, um, I think, for learning as well as uh, getting to be more of like a well-rounded person because you could do so much more because it wasn't a big Sure. What uh, stu um, just any student clubs that you're in and athletics? Tell us about that. Sure. Um, I swam um, since I was in kindergarten, and I um, I stopped swimming then when I was a sophomore in high school, and then I also um, was involved with FFA. Um, I did that for four years, and I was very involved. I served on the state executive committee my senior year of high school, and then I was a state FSA officer um, a year after I was finished with high school. So I took a year off between high school and college. Um, I traveled the state of Indiana um, for the 9,000 FSA members. I spoke to high school classes, I spoke to uh, banquets, I was um, a speaker at conventions, I met with governor, or government officials, um, just all sorts of different people that I was able to interact with that year. And I really think it was that year that has really um, made me um, what I did at Purdue um, because of the people that I met that year and a lot of things just worked out with that. Sounds good. Um, we're, uh, and then I was also involved with um, 4-H as well, and then I think that that kind of jump-started my SSA career. Um, so I did that, and then I was also involved with, um, we had swing choir, I was involved with musicals, student council, um, National Honor Society, you can name it, I was in it in high school. Very good. Uh, did any of your travels include, did you come to Purdue well, do, were you, during that year? Were there any um, meetings or things? Uh, yeah, that, I oh? did. Well, as... Um, in 4-H, uh -huh. I um, went to Purdue, I think, starting just about every summer since I was in seventh grade um, for a couple of days. And then every summer I went to Purdue um, for the state of the convention. So I was there quite a bit. And then the year that I took off, um, I was at Purdue a lot because we had training here and things like that. Sure, good. Does that, make, does that influence your decision to come to Purdue, or how did you happen to choose that? Tell us a little about that. Um, I chose to come to Purdue because um, I guess it first started off, the, I have a picture of me in a Purdue outfit when I was about four months old. <laughs> um, and so my cousins, they lived in Lafayette. Uh, my mom's family all lived in Lafayette. So they were all Boilermakers. And so I just always thought that I would um, come to Purdue. And then whenever it really came down to time to looking at schools, um, I thought about looking other places, um, but then with SFA, um, I knew I wanted to be in agriculture, and Purdue obviously is the best option for that in state. So that's why yeah, I came to Purdue. Right. Did you come for a day on campus before uh, before you started? I didn't because I was already so familiar with Purdue oh. um, because of being a state officer and that year out. Um, I didn't really need to go. Sure. Okay. Let's ta ta tell us a little about at Purdue, and I know you've been involved in some activities, but what is your major and uh, uh, at Purdue, and did you, have you been living in the same place since you came? Tell us a little about that. Okay. Um, I am in agricultural economics, and I'm dual majoring with that 
with agricultural communication. And uh, so I started with that, and I'm actually ending with that, unlike most people. Um, I really had a vision for what I wanted to do, and that, um, it's changed a little bit or tweaked a little bit exactly what I want to do, um, but I had a pretty clear vision because of that year out of school what I wanted to do. Sure, okay. And uh, so I have had three different internships. Um, I interned with Indiana SA for a summer as a program specialist, and then I worked for Monsanto as a field sales trainee, or a field sales intern in Nebraska, and then I worked as a marketing intern for Monsanto in the corporate headquarters in St. Louis. Sounds good. And I have lived at Glenwood Cooperative for four years. I actually moved in as a freshman, and uh, so that worked out well for me. Good. Now, let's, let's talk a little about the Board of Trustees. For the researchers, you're the student representative, correct? Yes, on the, the board. governor appoints one student that okay. makes up the 10 people on the board every other year. Okay. So it's a two-year appointment. Uh, for the researchers, can you tell us how, how the appointment comes about so that they uh, get a little bit of in, uh, background information? Do you, uh, are you interviewed by them, or do you apply? Tell us a little bit about that, how it comes about. Okay. Um, so there's just like an open application that you apply um, within Purdue, like student government usually hosts it. And then there's a committee of Purdue people that you interview with. And then for our group, um, they picked three finalists. And then those finalist names are given to the governor's office. And then um, someone from the governor's office, usually their policy director, um, they uh, interview someone and then um, they choose the person from there. Okay, that's right. And it's a two-year appointment, is that correct? Yep. Okay, yep. that's all right. Now, was tell us a little bit about being on the board. Was there is there an orientation and some of the were did you serve on any committees? Yeah, um, there was a kind of like a half a day orientation. I also started on the board with Keith Croc, um probably in September of two thousand seven. I want to say and. Um, so I started with them, and I am on the Academic Affairs and Physical Facilities Committees. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that. And you, in, and you and you interact with them, and there's a, um, and also uh, this position includes the voting. Is that correct? The student yeah, representative. Um, I vote. I vote just like anybody else does. Sure. I have the same voice as everyone else. Right. Um. So. So it's been really interesting just to view uh, the university more on a bigger picture level. Um, as a trustee, you really can't be as um, detailed um, as most of the other like leadership positions I've had. You can just like kind of have your hand in everything, mm -hmm. um, but as a trustee, you can't. Okay. <laughs> so okay. um, it's been a really good learning experience. All right. And uh, now let's talk a little about some of the awards. I want to congratulate you. You're one of the recipients for the McCockney Award, which you received in April. Yeah. What, uh, how did uh, you learn about that? What, did, did someone contact you? Oftentimes when I interview people, I say, was it a, a surprise? And sometimes awards are and sometimes they're not. They have a little bit of a glimmer. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was a really big surprise. Um, I had applied. Um, I knew that the award was available um, I had a lot of friends last year that graduated that were pretty involved on campus. And so I have always learned a, a lot of opportunities through some of those people. And um, one of my friends, um, actually a couple of them, had won the award last year. And so I talked with them about it. And um, so I had to fill out a big application. And then um, I was, they just called um, into the associate dean's um, problem home and that they said that he needed to talk to me, and I had no idea what for, and so then he said that I got the award. Oh, so. is, there a, is there a monetary, or do you get a certificate? I'm thinking of the research. Yeah. That there is? Okay. Um, you get, like, it's all, I guess, like, Mr. McGoy, he um, was part of the MCL cafeteria. The MC is from his name. Good, okay. Um, and so he put in a certain amount of money, I think about 10 years ago, and so... Um, he wanted it to equal $2,000, um, 
um, but he had like all these equations about how it got to that money. So um, this year I got 3,200, and then um, depending on how much the endowment brings off, that's how they decide how many awards they can get. Okay, that's so they gave six awards this year. Right, very good. Let's talk about some of the other um, positions that you've had. I know that you've been uh, for the Purdue, uh, president of the Purdue Foundation Student Board. Could you tell the researchers what that organization is? Yeah, um, Purdue Foundation Student Board is a student group that um, they help with President's Council events. Uh, they kind of, they help host them. Um, the special events office um, does all the planning and everything, but then the students come and help um, with a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff, but once all that kind of stuff is done, they're the ones that get to sit down um, with the donors and with the Purdue alumni and just um, talk to them and engage them in conversation. Uh, so that is a little bit about um, Purdue Foundation Student Board, but we're also a student organization, so we are able to, um, like some of those people have become my best friends, mm -hmm. um, and they're just um, really fun people. So we get to do like all the President's Council pregame um, brunches, we do the tailgates, we, um, very uh, active. The more events, the more events that you um, are involved in, and the more you're involved in the organization, the more you get to do. Um, so um, they have on the road events um, that are in other states, and so you get to fly there and help um, MC the program for those. So um, for two years, I went to Naples. They have a big Purdue event in Naples, and then um, this year I was able to go to the event in Houston and. Dallas. So yeah, that was really right. fun. Um, Jill, are the are the members of the foundation board? Are they from all the academic schools, or how how large is the organiz is is the foundation um, for the there students? Are, there are about thirty five students in it, and um, it's all done by an application pro an application and interview process. And so we like to get as um, diverse as a group of as possible. Um, not all of the academic schools are. Um, represented just because people haven't applied and things sure. like that. Okay. So um, okay. it's a very selective group. All right. And you also, now you talked about you lived in Glenwood, but you've been the president and the treasurer there. Uh, I was thinking of yeah. the researchers. Could you tell them just a little bit about what the co-op is so that they get a little bit of a feel? Sure. Um, the cooperatives, um, there's 12 cooperatives on campus, seven girls' houses and uh, five boys' houses. And um, the main difference between cooperatives and sororities or fraternities uh, would be that we don't have a national organization. Um, it's just a system here at Purdue. Um, but we do all of our own cooking and cleaning. Um, so that's how it saves um, quite a bit of money. It's about a third of the cost of living in a residence hall or in a fraternity or sorority. So it's a lot cheaper option. Um, and then the houses are smaller. There's 34 girls that live in my house. Um, but I like that because I get to know everyone instead of just a group of people. Right. How many are, are um, going to be graduating as you are that are in the house this um, year? There, there are six of us this year that are all graduating together. Okay. So, okay. Uh, um, yeah. I know that um, uh, other researchers have, and uh, people have talked about the old masters, and I know you were involved with that with the co-chair for the day. Could you just tell me what that involved for you with the old masters? Sure. Yeah, I started old masters as a freshman. I was a host or a hostess uh, my freshman year, and Max Armstrong was my old master, which is really cool because he is in um, agricultural broadcasting. So I've been able to see him throughout my four years at Purdue at various of, like professional development conferences as well. So that's been really cool. And then I was asked to um, serve as the day scheduling co-chair. Um, I worked with um, 11 other individuals on the central committee. And so day scheduling co-chair, we scheduled um, 10 people's um, days while they were at Purdue. We scheduled with um, professors and just different um, classrooms so that the old masters could talk with people um, all over campus and so people could just hear their stories. Okay. And I'd say old masters is, um, has been one of my favorite things at Purdue um, because every year the, the program is just so inspiring and encouraging just to hear people's success stories and how they got to where they've been. Mm -hmm. 
and they share those experiences while they're on campus, don't they? And yeah, get they, to it. Um, they usually talk with, I think someone figured up, they talked with like 15,000 people or something like that, like over the three days between the 10 of them. <laughs> so they talked with quite a few people sure. and it's just, it's just an incredible program to be a part of it and to hear people's stories and what they've experienced. That's right, exactly. Just like our old, just like our oral history program. <laughs> uh, yes. One, <laughs> one other thing, you're also on the the, Na the Mortarboard National uh, Honorary Society or the Social Chair. What what, what did that involve? Um, Mortarboard is based on scholarship, leadership, and service, and so um, you never know that you are nominated. For that, you just, um, they call it, you get tapped. Um, so someday um, in the spring, um, a group of the current class of Mortarboard, they come and they start singing a song in the middle of your class, and then they, like, call your name, and then you get, a, get to come down and um, accept um, kind of like your bid to be in the organization. And so um, it's usually around 40 student leaders that have been involved on campus for the past three years. And then you serve on that your senior year. Um, I think there was like this past year we did like 30 different events um, and we um, helped with the Books for Youth program um, where um, the Child and Family Protection Services, they, um, they worked with us in between, uh, Mortar Board was the one that started it and Working with them, we collected over 12,000 books for foster children in the Tippecanoe County and surrounding areas. Very good. Um, so that was really cool. And we just done a lot of other service projects. Um, as a social chair, it was just kind of um, my responsibility to make sure that we had some fun events um, for us as members to get to know each other better. Right, yeah. And also for the researchers, Mortar Board, you publish the annual calendar that all everybody uses, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Right. You, you can't know. get along without that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, now, as you look ahead, what um, what's the next stage? Uh, you're going to be graduating. What are, do you know? What your plans are going to be? Yeah, I'm actually going to be going back to Monsanto, um, the company that I interned with for two years. Um, I was fortunate enough to um, get an offer extended to me um, at the conclusion of my internship and so I had a job before school started this year. So it relieves a lot of pressure um, for throughout the year. Uh, so I will be going to Troy, Ohio and training there for six to 12 months. And then um, once I get my own um, sales territory, I'll be an account manager somewhere else that's yet to be determined, but I'll be there full time then. Um, upon my training. Very good. Are you going, you going to have a little vacation before you get started after commencement? Or I am. Yeah, I, get, I get about six weeks off, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm going to be volunteering with uh, 4-H and SSA over the summer. Um, I just I know that they've really given me a lot, and so I just like to help those organizations sure. a lot as much as I can. So I will be doing that. Good. Well, that sounds good. Do you have a, uh, how about a, pay, a, Purdue, <coughs> a Purdue tradition? Do you have one of those that you'd like to share with us? Any tr tradition that comes to mind? Oh, my favorite Purdue uh -huh. tradition. Yeah. I would probably just say um, football is probably my favorite time. I just remember the first time as a freshman in college sitting in the stands with everybody else for my first Purdue football game in the student section. And it's just like a feeling that you will never get yeah. again. Like, you know, all uh, being with everyone and actually like being a part of the family finally. There you go. There you go. New people. Right. Um, well, but one thing that wasn't on my bio, I think that um, is probably important. I've also been a part of Iron Key this year. Uh huh. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar about that. That probably tell, wasn't tell on us, my bio. No, tell us yeah, a little bit about it. That wasn't on my bio because. Um, it is a secret organization. Um, so the year that you're involved with Iron Key, it is like a secret um, honor society within Purdue. Okay. Uh, Twelve students and um, four to five honoraries are chosen um, each year, and you serve um, in secrecy. Um, so the the main mission and goal of um, the society is to. Um, serve Purdue without letting people know that you're doing that. And so um, we've been working on a project all year. We're working on a, a Purdue Heroes project. Mm, okay. uh, we um, we um, 
put out a call for um, anybody at Purdue, any alumni, anybody, um, could nominate their heroes of the Purdue family. Um, so we had over 100 nominations, and so it ended up being about 80 people because some people got repeats and things like that. Um, so we had about 100 nominations, or 80 nominations of people, and then we recognized them with a banquet um, that they um, were able to come and enjoy some dessert and some good conversations. And um, then um, 11 of those people, we kind of chose the stories that we felt like would most inspire um, the public, even though everybody's story is very inspiring. Um, we chose 11, um, and they are going to be featured on the Big Ten Network Spoiler Bites. Ooh, good. Um, so they'll have a couple minute segments about each of them on there, just kind of talking about their stories. Um, so we have a very wide range of stories that we have posted on that will be on there. And then also to go along with our project, uh, we knew that as student leaders that a huge need um, on campus is um, communication effort um, to be enhanced. And so we are going to be putting a screen or a LCD outside outdoor screen. Um, it's going to be close to like the Lions Fountain. Um, I think they call it Centennial Mall in between Witherall and Stanley Coulter. Okay. And so we are going to have a screen. We're going to put a plaque on there that says like this is dedicated to the Purdue heroes. And then um, so we're going to have like they call them like East Sidewalk flyers. So they put flyers on this computer program and it um, kind of does a loop of them to advertise events. And then in between that, we are going to have about Purdue heroes, like so there are each of the heroes that we had on the Big Ten Network, they'll have like a minute or two um, little blurb like every so often on the screen. So we can, um, we really just want people to hear their stories and um, to understand, um, you know, their, their stories and how it can influence them. And, Right. Um, Sounds good. Oh, that's yeah. a wonderful project. When are they going to, will be up this summer? They're going to get it, uh, be after you leave, um, they'll be finished, right? Yeah, I think okay. they're going to try to get it finished um, over the fall. We need to finish up our fundraising, mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully we'll get that done in the next couple of um, weeks, if not days. Sure. And so uh, we'll finish that up, and we'd like to see the screen up by fall. All right. But homecoming would probably be a good event to kind of highlight it, I think. Yeah. Uh -huh. Are the, is the Iron Key, um, Jill, is there different students every year? Is it a maximum yes. of 12 in the group? Is that how it goes? Is that how it's yeah, formed? Every, oh. Yeah, every year. Um, so it's kind of funny because um, Iron Key used to be only for men. Okay. And Mortar Porter was only for women. Okay. Um, but now it's um, men and women for both organizations. Mm -hmm. And so there was a few of us that were on both. Um, but it has been, um, Iron Key has been absolutely awesome this year um, because it's a secret organization, so the only people you can talk to about it are the people in it. So you get to be best friends with those people, and sure. a lot of them I've been involved in other organizations with. They bring um, a diverse background in what they've been involved in. Yeah, so there's been people that, I know one of the guys I had never met before, but he's um, really involved with um, Air Force ROTC. And so it's just been really cool to um, talk with him and to learn more about that. Just learn about the programs at Purdue that you never knew. And then um, during that year, we really support each other a lot and just do what we can to sure. help each other. Right. Sounds yeah. good. Very good. One final thing. And yeah. do you have an outstanding event that you, that uh, comes to mind? And doesn't necessarily be Purdue any outstanding event that you experienced in over time? Yeah. Um, so my absolute favorite event was... Um, whenever the Neil Armstrong building was dedicated, um, so the Friday before that, they unveiled the statue, and I was able to help pull off the sheet from the statue, and I um, got to give a few remarks as, as a student because um, the statue is really portraying him as a student at Purdue. Super. And sure. then um, the next day, uh, well, I attended the um, event that evening, about um, they had Neil and um, quite a few other people or all the there's like 16 astronauts I think and then um, that next morning I was actually asked to MC um, the program um, the dedication and so I got to introduce Neil Armstrong himself and so 
that was one of the coolest things I've done at Purdue when my family was there. And um, then we went to the football game. And then um, after that, we were able to go to President Corva's home at Westwood. And we got to talk with the astronauts. And um, I think the coolest thing for me was just to see my family enjoy the day as well. And right. I've gotten to have a lot of cool experiences at Purdue. Um, and so they got to have that as well. Oh, that's nice. Joe, any in closing comments that anything special you'd like to share with us in uh, the balls in your court? Anything special? Okay. Goes, yeah, go ahead. Um, I just have had an amazing opportunity and an amazing experience at Purdue. I could not have um, imagined all the opportunities that I had um, coming here um, prior to. Um, and just um, with a lot of hard work, um, I've really gotten to achieve a lot of things, but the best thing about it is just um, been the people that I've been able to meet, and um, the people at Purdue are absolutely phenomenal. Everyone from um, the president to the administrative staff, um, everyone has just been phenomenal, and um, I'm just really happy with the experience that I've had here. Good. So. Th thank you. We, on behalf of the Oral History Program, I want to thank you, and I want to wish you the best of luck, and my best congratulations to you. And thank you very, oh, thank very you. much. Okay, we'll keep in touch, I'm sure. Okay, have okay. a good day now. Bye-bye. Thanks, Kate. Bye. -bye. Thanks, Kate. Bye.